Hello everybody, <clears throat> welcome to the show and welcome to episode 153. <clears throat> hey guys, back here again. Um, you know, again, I, I, at nauseam I say the same thing where I find my guests, for most of them, it's pod magic of course, but... Uh, we found a really delightful woman who has an interesting story, and we got to talk a little bit here off mic, and I realized we were kind of doing the whole thing, so it's like, let's just jump into it, let's talk, and, and hopefully help somebody. Um, so would you like to, uh, you know, tell us your name, maybe a little about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Jen Hardy, and I have two podcasts. One is Fabulous Over 50, and one is Medical Gaslighting, and I also have, I have seven kids, I'm a homeschool mom. And um, I have multiple chronic illnesses, which is how we kind of started this whole thing. My podcast used to be Hardy Mom for um, for moms with chronic illness. So that's kind of how we connected, I think. Sure, yeah. No, I mean, I, I saw a lot of what your profile is about. And I was going through the 50, you know, about what you do for women for over 50. And I'm like, well, this is really cool because, like, my grandma, she's 90. And she was always kind of into that red hat club. And she was always, like, a very independent woman. Um, even in from her seventies and, and, and now up into her nineties. So it was like, I, I was kind of caught by that. And then the chronic illness stuff, of course, is I'm more connected with because of having my own disability and having a little chronic pain myself. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely love having you on. <clears throat> um, so like we, I guess we can kind of start with the, the chronic illness thing. Like wh- where does that start? Like, were you born with what you have? And then obviously tell us what you do have. <laughs> So, yeah, so I was, I was born with asthma, but nobody knew that. And so when I was a kid, I always, I spent a lot of time being exhausted um, and asking to be taken out of sports and not to run and all these things. And everyone just told me that I was lazy. And it wasn't until I was 40 and I went in to do some testing and the doctor said, oh my gosh, you have really bad asthma. How have you not known that this whole time? And that was kind of the beginning of a little bit of validation for me um, because you know, when the doctors all tell you everything's in your head, you just assume it's all in your head, which is kind of where the medical gaslighting podcast came from. Right. Um, but then in 2012, my husband got really sick. We were actually, we were told he had cancer, which he didn't, thank God. Um, but going through the treatment and surgery and all that, my sister-in-law came to stay with me and I fell down the stairs twice when she was there. And she said, you know, most people don't fall down the stairs, you know, frequently. And uh, maybe you should go in and have some testing done and make sure you're okay. And when I did, they did an MRI and they found that most of my muscle um, in my lower back is gone. It's just been completely atrophied because I have muscular dystrophy, which was also unnoticed by anybody this whole time. (laughs) Um, But it took me from 2012 when they found that x-ray all the way till 2018 to get that diagnosis. And in the meantime, I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, which is a rare disease that affects breathing and swallowing and that sort of thing. And so I, in one year, I spent six separate weeks in the hospital and had 20 separate day-long infusions at home. And through that, I was trying to figure out how in the world am I supposed to parent, let alone homeschool or like keep my house clean when I can't even get out of bed, right? Sure. And so that's kind of where all the things that I do were born because I just could find people complaining but not giving solutions. And so my husband said, well, if you can't find it, it's your job to create it. And so I started a blog and I wrote a book and then and then I started the podcast in 2018. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of great advice really because I was in the same place about three years ago where I just was, I was trying to overcome my mental health. I always thought I wanted to do a podcast or something in that vein. And, um, I didn't feel like there was enough people speaking for at the time. It was mainly just for the disability community. I I moved on and, and, and still talk about that, but also other topics as well. But, um, but I really just didn't hear anything. And then when I started it, I was like, I started to interview people with, with visual impairment, which is fine because that's what I know. And then I, I listened to other blogs and, and ch- YouTube channels and things that are people with disabilities. And I realized they were kind of sticking to what they know and they weren't going to the broader scale of, of the whole community. And then I saw that, uh, that uh, Jesus, that Netflix documentary, Crip Camp. And that kind of inspired me because it was just about all these people who fought for us many, many years ago and they sacrificed so much. And then I started saying like, I don't see enough of that now. 
Like I don't see enough of us like picking up the baton and running with it and, and trying to make a difference. It seems like we're so segregated as a community. And um, and I was like, I have to just have a voice out there, even if it's not heard enough. I need to try because staying quiet is just not gonna do. It's not gonna suffice. So you have to just you have to put yourself out there. And then it's like, as a person who was always not really much of a leader, was kind of shy and stayed hidden. It was like, well, how the hell do I go meet people that are the same like like minded people and then wanted to do the same, you know, on the same adventure and and um and wanted to, you know, have the same message. It's like they're out there, but you really have to make an effort. You have to try and you have to it, it, it takes a lot of work, but it is very gratifying when you when it all kind of comes together. So I'm sure it's for the same thing for you. Exactly. And I feel like, you know, especially when we have health issues or whether they're physical or men- mental or emotional, you know, whatever. If everybody just did a little bit, right, we could really come together and and spread awareness and all kinds of things. But it seems like so few people can step up and do things, you know, and so the rest of us are, are trying to scramble. <laughs> but I think, yeah, especially in mental health, I think there's such a stigma. You know, people are afraid to step forward and say, you know, that I'm going through this, but I think it's so important for people to do it. Yeah. And and it like for me, the way I look at it currently, it's like I feel like some of us just have to be I don't want to say sacrificial lambs, but we have to be the ones that be the most vulnerable and have to put ourselves out there more and, and, and take the hits, the lumps that come with it so that the next group of us don't have to or it's easier for them. And it's unfortunate that we have to, but it's like not enough of us, not enough of us are comfortable and they still have a lot of shame and they don't want to come out of those shadows to go, look, yes, I am comfortable with being a paraplegic or deaf or blind or whatever. It, it's hard. And, and especially like with the chronic uh, pain community, there's a lot of them that just get pushed off as they're faking it. So a lot of them don't. Oh my even, gosh. Yeah. A lot of them don't want to come forward. Cause it's like, you already don't believe us. Um, and so it, 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 I mean, there's a yin and a yang. Like it, it's, I don't know, like you can't, you, I get how we get to the mindset of not wanting to come out. Cause I get, I've been there many times. I, it, it's embarrassing sometimes to put yourself out there, but once you kind of do it enough and you start to share your story, cause in the beginning for me, when I did it, it was like when I, when the rush of like, Oh my God, I'm telling people I was molested. Oh my God, I'm telling people I was bullied and all these things. When it first happened, like I just felt like emotionally drained. But now, like I just said it to you now, and it's like as if I didn't say it. It's like, oh, it just bounces around. So you become more comfortable with yourself once you get over the shame, you get over the fact that people are going to judge you. Because in our cases, most people have judged us many times before. So it's like you just you start to kind of just get comfortable with it and just go, okay, like judge me if you want, but I'm still going to stand on my own two feet and, and put my message out there. And you take it if you like, you take it if you want, and if you don't, then don't. Exactly. No, I, I 1000% agree with you. And I think, you know, the more people say things like that, you know, and, and it's just like you said, like in, in passing conversation, you know, yeah, this happened to me, this big thing happened to me and somebody else might hear that and think, Oh, but that happened to me. And I've never been able to say that so casually. How did you do that? And they might pull you aside and be able to, you know, say, Hey, I don't know. It, it, it seems to, I've seen it happen and it really is helpful. And so that's why we need to get those voices out there. Right. And, and share with people and let them know. And so let me ask you a question. This is something, this is just a hot button for me. I, I cannot stand the word mental illness. I mean, it's two words, but I feel like the, the words mental illness together have this stigma. And I wish there was another word that we could use that, that would encompass what that is. I don't know without that. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? No, no, I I get you because I feel the same way about the word disabled. Because it's like, I, and, and I'm not a word person. I swear I'm not a censorship person. I think people should be able to do whatever the hell they want, think how they want. It's like there's consequences that come with things. But in general, like I'm not worried about what you said 30 years ago. If you've evolved, if you haven't evolved oh in my 30 God. years, then, exactly. then, then you're really a piece of shit. But like if 30 years ago, like who the hell, well, when I was four, but 10 years ago, I've evolved in, I've evolved in the last five years. So I don't, I don't right. worry about that, but I know what you mean because like for me, the word disabled, you, you take off the D it's disabled, like, like disabling an alarm. It doesn't work. So that means we don't work and we're, we're to consider the people that are broken and something on us doesn't work. So it's like, and then the fact that we, most of us don't 
physically work because we're not allowed to based on certain things. And some of us are afraid to get out there and all that. But so like words can really make a difference. And yes, mental health does have a huge stigma attached to it. It's like, like someone was telling me like, oh, there's been 90 mass shootings this year. And I'm like, yes and no, because there's a lot of shooting. And again, I don't want to go down this whole road, but like mass shootings is now a trigger word for people. It's like, oh my God, there's been 90 and it's, it's halfway through February. It's like, yeah, but some of them are just like one person shooting another person. He missed and it hit, it ricocheted and hit two other people. And they're saying it's a mass shooting. Right. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying mass shootings it used to just be someone shooting up a school. And again, I know the word, what it means, but it's like we're, we're turning it into something else. Like there was a shooting in Philadelphia where somebody went to shoot somebody outside Gino and Pat's and he went up to the person, the guy moved and he hit two other, he hit three other people. They didn't die. Thank God. Right. But it's like, they called that a mass shooting and it wasn't, it wasn't intended. He did He didn't go there anger for the world, for a bunch of people. He just said, I'm, I'm just trying to kill one person or injure or right. whatever. And so it's the same thing with mental health. It's like when you hear mental health, everyone just goes, Oh God, these crazy people. And then this, and, and a lot of time mental health, speaking of shootings, mental health is always attributed to that, which it is. But we get right. lost in the mental health aspect of it because we just go, oh, mental health only means shootings because politics. We have to throw our own little views in there and we have to censorship and we have to take away guns and all these things. And it's like, no, like this kid, what, what first we get it. The kid shot up a school. It's awful. But before we completely vilify him and say he's the worst person on the planet, can we figure out what his background was, how he was treated at home, what his mental health was? And I'm not saying he still shouldn't be vilified in some ways, but some there's at some point somebody could have jumped in and said, Hey, like, are you okay? You need a hug? Like, Hey, you need a friend? Um, so, yeah. but yes, no, I, I, I completely understand the mental health. Like I, it, it, because it's over you, it's a word that's overused, but it's not like a word that's like over talked about. Um, when, right. when it is talked about, like I said, it's talked about in, in these little small pockets and, and there's no real meaning behind way. it. Yeah. And trigger, trigger, good night is another, you know, it's funny. People say that they're triggered by something. And I feel like if something horrible has happened to you and something reminds you of that horrible thing, that is triggering. I get that. But the fact that everybody's triggered every other second, I don't know. Like, stop, just stop. It, it just because you have a feeling, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, there's a, there's just a lot that go behind it. I don't know. And I never get to talk about it to somebody. So this oh. is really interesting to no, talk to you about that. it. Yeah. Um, because I feel like if you, if you've had something happen, like you're molested and then somebody else is talking about a sexual predator, that is triggering, right? Sure. Cause it brings you in that moment. But if, if you don't like salad, if somebody talks about croutons and you're like, well, that trigger, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're gone, we've gone so far uh, with words. I don't know. And I feel like people need to stop that because the whole thing about words, like you're saying, you know, like people are associating little things with huge words, right? And if we just stop doing that, we can have much better, more friendly conversations with more people than what happens right now. I feel like people are so segregated. Yeah. by words yeah and, and, you know and, and identifiers sure. we just need to stop i don't know i mean i am a white person and and it, it i think the fact that there is any sort of racism it just blows my mind first of all i do not understand it but the fact that we're so segregated not just by like race or religion but like by everything and by disabilities yeah. you know I don't know. It just, I just want to, I want to create a flag and it says the human party and we all fly it. And yeah. then we can all sit around and have these conversations, right? In a, in a very good educated way without judgment. Yeah. Because I mean, that really needs to happen. One of the things I've noticed that's very alarming to me is when you go on like social media, like Instagram or any of them, they don't say sexual assault. They say S.A. And I'm like, what the hell is SA? And someone had explained it to me. It's like, it's sexual assault. I'm like, so we can't say sex. We can't say rape. We can't say sexual. We can't say what these things are. We're just censoring that because it wasn't, you can't censor the physical act. A lot of people are getting raped and sexually assaulted right now. And we're just going to say, oh, you were SA'd. Yeah. That, that really, that, 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 that sounds really horrifying. Like, come on. Like, where, yeah. Where, where no. We what is that? What is right. this shit? Like it, it, it's, it's sad. Like we've gotten to the point you, because I, I, I put something in a post one time, uh, an episode, I said it was just about, you know, suicide awareness and they, they, they censored my page. I, I got taken off for 24 hours because I put suicide in the title 
it didn't say, I hope you, oh, I, I want people to go commit right. suicide. It just said suicide awareness. It's like, wow, this is really sad because w- this is what's keeping us from getting closer to each other and being able to have these conversations because we want to say, again, like I got it. We got to the point where we said N word and things like that. But still, even when you do things like that, we, we like that you, again, it was the, the, the creators that created South Park many years ago when they had that whole funeral for the N word, they came out and said, look, you're either going to have, it's either going to be this, it's going to be all or nothing because you can't take away one word and expect other people not to want their word. And which, and this was exactly where we are now because now it's not just one word. Now everybody has 10 words and we're at a place where we don't, we're not communicating. We're just all offended at everything and we're just aggravated. We're, and and we're, you know, of course we're still dealing with the pandemic or the, the aftermath of it. And we're still dealing with all the things that are, you know, the, the, the mass shootings and, and, the earthquakes and the, the thing that happened in Memphis, not the, uh, not the mass shooting, but the, the, the Tyree Nichols thing with the police. Like we're dealing with so many things, but all of it is just to keep us from each other more and more because there is a lot of good things that are going on in this world, but we don't see it. And, and it's hard to see it. And right. that's, you know, again, kind of, you were talking about your friend off air. It's like, I really do believe a lot of us who have, less vision we see a lot more than the average person because we are forced to use other senses to kind of grasp on uh like like just morality and and just like empathy like we have empathy for other people and we can like i i don't i don't vote i would vote if i had someone to vote for but because i believe that both sides are completely just destructive and they don't give a shit about us and it's it's just I, or not even just that, just I don't believe in either candidate. It's like, well, vote for the lesser of two evils. But it's like, if I say Saddam Hussein or Hitler, who are you going to vote for? Like, well, that's that's kind of the extreme. Like, is it? Like, yeah, they didn't kill six million Jews, but they both have sexual assault cases against them, against women. They both, you know, they both have issues. And why would, and it's not even just that. Like, I just don't believe in their policies. So why should I vote for them? But it's like, I don't have biases, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't, I'm not really biased towards certain things. I'm willing, I'm open-minded to try new things um, because I don't, I'm not blinded by like little stupid shit that everyone else is. Like people are just like, oh, you, you know, I won't drink a Coke because I like Pepsi. It's like, but do you think that brand really cares about you? They don't. They just want your money. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, and you're taking the thing like instead of voting for the lesser of two evils, you're saying I don't want to vote for evil at all. Like, no. <laughs> which is you know understandable because it's it's just gotten crazy. You know, and it's funny. I was I was raised in a house where one of my parents was conservative and one of my parents was liberal. Right? One was a Democrat, one was a Republican, and their friends were a mix. And we could all we they would have they would always have dinner parties and and they had friends in politics and it was a very pleasant conversation. You know, we had a lot of great conversation, but there was none of this hateful venom spewing stuff that there is now. You know, I mean, I can't even, I don't know, I wouldn't have even been able to fathom that as a younger person because I just thought that people who were different could get together and have talks, you yeah. know, and it's wild now. And I don't know if there's, there's a show and I don't even know what it was on, but it's called The Swamp. And it talks about politics and some people from different parties got together and did it. But they were talking about how the the goal right now is to fuel the hatred because the hatred is is better at getting people to do what they want than sharing kindness. And so they're working on getting people riled up. And I thought that is just. Yeah. And it sells, you know, yeah, it sells and it sells. And when people stop buying it, they'll stop selling it. But as long as people are buying it and getting into it and hating on each other, you know, then it's just going to keep going. And it's just, it's just sad. Cause I feel like, I don't know when, when I was, when I was younger, I got, I got pregnant when I was 20, I was young. It was the first one out of all my friends. And so my friends that didn't have kids were like, Oh, well, you've got a child now. So, you know, you're kind of doing your own thing. Then I got friends with kids, right. But some of them worked, some of them didn't. And they're like, Oh, you stay at home, whatever. So there was this judgment. And then we started homeschooling and the parents whose kids went to school were like, Oh, you think you're better? Because, And I just feel like every stage that I've been in, there's this, there's these factions of every group. I don't know. It's just very sad. Yeah. I, I, and there's really no, you know? it, it seems like you're always somebody, somebody always wants to have a label on you and you always have to fit into a box. 
And it's like, but what if I don't fit into a box? Like, I've always felt like there was very few places in the world that are like the places that I've lived and, and just, you know, wherever I worked and whatever. There's very few places that I felt like I've actually fit in because like, okay, I lived in Philadelphia for a long time and I moved to Williamsport, which is a more of a country area. And so everyone down here calls me a city boy. But in reality, I don't think I'm very, I'm, I'm partially a city boy. I have some country aspects to me, but I don't feel like I'm that either. Like I, I, but it's like, why can't I just have a little bit of everything? Or why can't I just be me, like my own individual? And like, I think that's what we're, we're missing now. Or what's we're like evaporating at this point is everyone's individuality. Because as we were talking about with TikTok and things, like we're kind of just following other people and our personalities and our, our sense of humors and all that is just kind of being warped into what someone else is or someone else is. is and we can't really we can't really determine who the hell we even are anymore because we're so lost in distractions and, and like a lot of us like they're saying how many people right now are just like a, how anxiety and depression is just going up and it's it's and they're saying that smoking and and alcohol is actually the intake is actually going down so they're trying to figure out why in like younger girls why suicide and depression is up even though it has nothing to do with alcohol or drugs and 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 it's like Okay, so what else could it be? And it's like, look at, look at all the propaganda that's being flashed on their screen every 15 seconds. Like, oh, another video. Oh, another video. And it's just like, even like we were talking about earlier with the mass shooting thing. Like, to say that there's been 94 or whatever it is mass shootings, when you hear that, it's like, oh, my God, now I can't go to the movie theater. Oh, my God, now I can't go to the grocery store, church. I can't go anywhere without being shot. I need to stay in my house and just buy stuff off Amazon and just barricade myself in. I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything because I'm petrified. And it's, it's, it's so sad because that's, that's what the world is coming to now. We're just afraid of everything. Everything on the news is just horrible. Well, and we're isolated, right? I mean, kids, teenage girls, you think about it. I mean, they're on their phone way more than they're with humans. Yeah. You know, and people need, you need healthy physical touch, not sexual touch, you know, at that age, but like yeah, I mean, yeah. healthy human, like your parents giving you a hug a couple times a day, right? But then these kids are taught like, oh, that's not cool. Oh, no, you shouldn't touch your parents. That, that's just creepy. That's just weird. Don't tell your parents you love them. Don't listen to them. You know, and then, well, where are you supposed to get that from, right? How are you supposed to get what you you physically need that? Yeah. You know, there was a guy named Leo Viscaglia that wrote a bunch of books when I was in high school, which was back in the 80s. And um, one of his things was that people need to be touched in a healthy, like non-sexual, like healthy touch at the minimum of three times a day in order to be mentally healthy and think now like since 2020 and all the things that ensued after that how many people besides little kids are getting that and i think the number are shockingly those numbers are shockingly low oh yeah because do it in school, we're just so yeah you, you know you're not allowed to touch your friends in school because now that's creepy your teachers aren't allowed to hug you anymore and if, you know, your parents are working all the time or some parents, unfortunately, a lot of parents now are just turned out. Oh, my gosh. Because I've got, you know, I've got younger kids and some of their parents, I don't know. They just need, they need an unpleasant touch. I guess to get them motivated. Oh, but like, you know, they, they just don't understand what their children need. I don't know. And so, you know, if you're not getting that, people aren't looking you in the eyeballs and saying, I love you and giving you a hug. You know, it, it would be real easy to get super depressed. And I was doing a research for um, a podcasting thing that I was doing. And they were saying that Gen Z, which is up to like tw age 26, over 55% of them are clinically depressed. How wild is that? That yeah. is a huge number. Yeah, for sure. You know, but I think it, it has a, to do with a lot of the things that we're talking about, you know, and the fact that you can't, like you were saying, you can't just go and talk about it you know, and just say, I'm really depressed. Somebody help me. Like, you can't just post that. I mean, some people do, but very rarely. Yeah. And then, you, you know, and, and get all attention. positive feedback. Right. Exactly. Because when you're really feeling that way, you don't really want to share it with the world. You yeah. know, and if you don't have people that you see, you know, if you're, if all you're posting is on social of you smiling, then who's going to know, you know, because you're not seeing people in person. They don't, they don't know that you're really feeling like that. Yeah. And there's a stigma attached if you got a therapist. Um, oh, you need help, huh? It's like, and then there's not, I mean, you know, it's hard to find a great therapist too. I mean, therapy is great. I've done it. Uh, I, I kind of ran its course with me just over the years, but it's like, you know, it's hard to find a therapist that really cares about you. It's, I mean, to me, it's really important for, 
the, the, like some of the most important jobs out here, like cops and nurses and doctors and therapists and like, you know, even just like bus drivers, people that you interact with every day for them to actually be good at their job and for them to try to care about people and not just be uh, the next person on your list. Because it's like, you know, right. when I found a great therapist, she meant so much to me because I was, I was so eager to open up to her because I know she cared about me. And I wasn't just, who's next on the list? Oh, Timothy West. Okay, let me read up on him. Oh, okay, I remember him, sort of. All right, uh, how does this make you feel? It's like, oh, great. This is not going to last long. And, and you know, it, it's, it's very important because I remember every person that treated me like a human and treated me great. Over the years, teachers, right. you know, anybody that I interacted with that were not family, that were not close friends, that were just kind to me when they didn't need to be. And I'll never forget them, even if I don't have a relationship with them to this day. I'll never forget them. And it's like that's it's very impactful. And that's the thing. And, and I know a lot of these jobs also don't pay as well, unfortunately. But it's like which right. they should for sure. Because I don't know who the hell wants to be a teacher nowadays. I don't know who the hell wants to be a nurse. My mom is a nurse, and, and she was in the oh hot, my gosh. she's in the hot zone in the ER in Philadelphia for COVID. Now, obviously, it's calmed down a lot, but like at one point, it was completely hectic. And um, so, like, it's you have to we have to care about those people too. And and because unfortunately, a lot of these professions they don't want they're just tired, and it's like, well, why would I give you? a sixty seventy thousand dollar effort when you're only paying me twenty five thirty and then we can't have that yeah. outlook we really can't but it's like it is it, there's so it's so convoluted and so messed up and there's not there's not just one right answer for all this stuff because it's like it's easy to just say well even though you're only getting paid 30 you still should be a good person but also it's like the more things go up you know how can anyone survive anymore like it's just it, it's the cost of living and everything that's going on like it's it's we're in a bad place and we like i said we have to find ways to kind of clear up the pollution and just kind of absolutely fix some of the things that are happening and like you said earlier just put a just put your part into it and just put a little good energy in even if you you know for for, for us with health issues we i talk a lot about having good health days and not like taking care of yourself and eating well I mean, just like I have good vision days and I have bad vision days. And on those good vision days, I'm way uh, more encouraged and I have uh, momentum and I feel good about wanting to do things. Whereas when my eyes are worse, I'm very depressed and I don't want to do a lot. So take yeah. advantage of those days where you feel more mobile and you feel like you, you have some sort of energy to put some good energy back. Give it back, and if you can, do it. Even if it's for a half hour, just use that half hour as, as an important time to make your difference. Um, and that goes for a lot of us. For anybody like with you with chronic pain, like, yeah, you might have days where you just don't want to get out of bed, and then there's days where you can walk a little bit, and you can, you can get to your computer, and you feel like, wow, like, today sucks for most people, but it doesn't suck as bad as yesterday, so here, here's, here I go. Yeah. And that's, yeah, take, exactly. advantage, take advantage of that stuff. It's, it's, it, it really, I mean, there's a lot of discouragement and, you know, like I said, I have my day, especially mentally where I'm just, I'm lost and I'm trying to figure out things. And, you know, like one of my new worries right now is I'm, I'm, people hear this, I've already done it, but I'm switching positions at my job and it's like my other job. And it's like, I don't really want to go to this department because it's, it's notoriously uh, dysfunctional where I don't really work well in dysfunction. I'm really more about, like, let's just all get along. Let's have a good time. Let's have fun. Let's just forget all the nonsensical rules of, oh, you should do this and dress like that and tuck this in. And it's like, I just want to have a good time, but also do the job. I get paid to do it. I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to do the job. Just leave all the politics at home. I don't want that shit. Like, let's just have a good time and try our best because when you look around, there's a lot of horrible things happening, and we all have jobs, and we're all living, we're walking, and we have some things that a lot of people don't. So let's just make the best of it and have a good time. But that's not how it works in that department. So I'm trying to figure out what my next move is because I don't know if I want to, I don't know if that would be the best thing for my mental health. Um, right. Well, yeah, definitely not. That doesn't sound good. No. And, and so that's, but that that's kind of how I make my moves now where it's just, I'm trying to be able to put out the best me for people to hear. But also I need to put myself in the best positions to do that because I can't just, I'm, I'm not going to fake it. For people like I've put out stuff on Instagram when I am sad 
I put out videos when I'm when I'm happy or when I'm a little anxious just because I want people to see what it's like to deal with mental health. It's not this, oh, I'm happy all the time and that's all you're going to see because that's, that's phony. It's disingenuous. So I'm, yeah. I'm big on just showing you what it's like to deal with this because there are great days and then there's really bad days. But the really bad days are not the really bad days of many years ago where I was on suicide watch. Now it's just depressing and it just kind of – you know, immobilizes me to the point where I'm just like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm not gonna really do anything. But um, yeah. But it's great that you're open like that. I think people need to hear that so much. They really do. You know, sure. um, because so many people have been through that that are just that don't talk about it. You know, like I, I, for eight years I've been talking about chronic illness and I never talked about how depression affected me or my family until just a few months ago because I was terrified to talk about it. You know, and here I am in the chronic illness space and still not sharing, you know, because of those, those things, because of everything that comes with it. But then I realized, oh my gosh, it's not just me, you know? And if we don't talk about it, like you said, we're not going to help anybody. No. We need to get talking about it. Definitely. And especially the way things are now. I just feel like things are so crazy now. People need to know that they're not alone in it. You know, they are definitely not alone. If you're listening and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you've got that too. Like, yeah, you're there's more than 50% of the people that are like you, Yeah, you know, so, so don't be embarrassed and reach out because no, you sure. never know. You know, I, I know when I was, gosh, a long time ago, we, gosh, it was like 20 years ago. I had four kids and we were living, we did, we lived in this beautiful house and, and um, things were not good in it. And, but I didn't tell anyone, you know, and um, I remember this one woman came to me, she was crying and, well, she didn't come to me. She was crying. I went to her and, and I said, you know, can I help you? Do you want to talk? Whatever. And she's like, no, I, I can't talk to you. You'd never understand your life. It's too perfect. And I thought, wow, no, I'm just really good at being a fraud. <laughs> Honestly, you know, because yeah. we get so used to acting a certain way and it really affected me. You know, it took me a long time to change after that, but it just, it stuck with me to the point where I was like, no, I need to be way more transparent with people so that if someone is struggling and I can help them, I need to be able to help them, you know, and, and let them accept it because they know I've been through it and stop pretending like everything's perfect when it's not. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, there was one thing I posted where I was literally crying and it was just because I was just, having a mental breakdown from just my sight was constantly acting up and I have so many other health issues, but it was just, it was just this culmination of all these things and it just became overwhelming. And I don't cry a lot anymore because of being on antidepressants and just supplements I take and things like that. So, and there's nothing wrong with crying, but I used to cry all the time and it's the first time I cried. And I, you know, I put it in the video like, or I, as a caption, I said, look, this was a couple of weeks ago. This is not how I feel right now, but I want you to know this is how I did feel at one point. And it's just showing right. them because, yeah, I did feel like a fraud sometimes because I, I, I tried to put on this tough facade that like, like oh, I'm, I'm, you know, nothing can affect me and, and I'm, I'm bulletproof. And I know deep down that's not how I felt. I was, I was, I was a wreck. And there's moments right. where it's just like, I don't want people to think, and like, I'm so big on like helping that person out there. And that's why I do have guests on instead of just myself, because I want people to realize, like, I don't know what it's like to have chronic pain, or at least on your level. I don't know what it's like to, to be deaf or, or be homeless or all these different things because I'd never lived it. And I hope I don't, but right. I, I can find you people that will, and maybe that'll help this one person out there not feel so alone. Because when I was at the bottom of the, and I was thought I was, I wanted to die. I, if I knew there was one person that I can talk to or I can hear someone's voice say like, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Wow. That's just like me. I'm not alone. Like it would have spread the, that little glimpse of light that I was holding on to would have gotten a little bigger and it would have helped right. me get out of the depths of hell that I was in. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's that, that stuff to me is very important. Just searching out, um, just people to help others. And if it's me and if it's friends I have on or whoever, just help them build whatever confidence they need to feel better and to, to make something of themselves. And I'm all for it. Right. Well, and I'll tell you what you hit. There, there's a, the, the pain thing, the chronic pain thing is such an issue right now because I have massive pain because I have, you know, a lot of the muscles in my lower back are missing, which means the ones that are left are, are overworked. 
you know, and the doctors say muscular dystrophy does not cause pain. But I try to explain to them, if you have a factory with a thousand employees, right, and half of them quit in one day, and you tell the rest of the employees they're going to do all the jobs from all the people that left and their own job now, starting from now, with no extra pay, that's just what they're going to complain, right? They're not going to be able to do it all. And that's what's happened to my muscles, right? I've got less than half of what's supposed to be there. And um, in fact, my doctor, you know, I, I have fought and fought and fought to get a very minor pain medicine. I can't get what I need because of this war on pain medicine, um, which I could do a whole three hour episode of my soapbox. Uh-huh. Um, but I'll just say it is so horrible because what they've done is they've taken the statistics from, oh, now I can't think of the word heroin because heroin is, you know, on the same whatever as like oxy or hydro, whatever. And, but they take those suicides and overdoses and, and addictions and they put that with the same pain medicine that you can get at the pharmacy. And that's where they're coming up with the numbers. And it makes me so upset because when you do that, it totally skews all the studies, right? And so I know a lot of people that are like, oh no, pain medicine is horrible. You know, I know this poor woman, her son, he was like 20. He got in a car accident. He was on pain medicine and then they took him off of the pain medicine just like suddenly and he was still in massive pain. And so he got on heroin because it was the only thing that stopped his pain and he ended up overdosing. But the reason he did that is because he couldn't get what he needed from the doctor. You know, and that's what people are understanding is that when you wake up every day in horrific pain and you know that there's that no one is going to help you, I mean, the chances that you're just going to go on pleasantly with your life are very low, you know, because it, it hurts so bad mm-hmm. and, and people just don't understand. And then they, they see you as a drug addict and it's so frustrating. Um, uh, and then part of my medical gaslighting podcast. I t- I've talked to so many people and so I that have been medically gaslit and mostly women of people in color, but I've seen it as with my husband as a patient too, that when you say you're in pain, the doctors, they're like, mm, I'm done. You know, if that's what you're here for, I'm done because you must be an addict. And it's, it's very hard. And I wish I had the solution to share with your audience. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, that, but that even happens I, when you yeah. go to like the emergency room and you're saying your anxiety or something is bothering you. And the first thing they want to do is do a blood test to figure out if you're drunk or you're high. And it's like, dude, like, do you understand? You're going to find the cleanest blood you've ever found because I've never done anything in my life. So go, go ahead and run it up on my insurance if you want, but you're wasting your time. Like I'm in pain or mentally I'm in pain and I'm just losing my shit right now. And all you're worried about is if I'm, if I'm high or not. Like, and again, exactly. it doesn't help because my eyes sometimes get red because I'm visually impaired and just, damage and things but it's like dude can can we look at my medical history it's longer than your career can we you've been a nurse for 10 years i've been doing this for 30 years can you just give me a break i get it you get it you see a lot of things but you know come on like yeah there's i I understand what you're saying like it's it's medicine and job and i don't they realize like it's easier to just get oxycontin off the street than it is as a prescription it's not hard to get right it's really not. And it, which is so, I don't know. And I guess, you know, I don't understand the whole nuances of the whole court case and the whole whatever, but I can tell you, it's just it's the people that I see online. I mean, they're, they can't work and they can't get on social security because doctors don't believe them that they're in pain, right? They lose their jobs, they become homeless. And then they just pick them another statistic because they can't get what they need. And there's got to be some sort of balance between identifying, okay, you've got nothing wrong with your body and you're saying that you have to have this much pain medicine or you clearly have all these diagnoses and several of them can cause pain. So we're going to help you, you know? Um, And the whole take Advil or Tylenol, um, no. (laughs) Well, I mean, not to be cheesy, but they they make everything, you know, white and black, but like there's so many different colors. There's so many layers to everything, especially a lot of these major issues that we're talking about, because like they want to just, like I said, it's back to the category like that. You're you're either one thing or you're not. You can't be in the middle. You can't be something else. There, it, it's a lot of things are. They want to simplify it as best as they can. Like they want you to be an article online where. It's, um. Anyway, we lost connection there, guys. But um. But yeah, no. It's. 
I don't know. I, I think I lost my train of thought now. Um, just it's just frustrating. Yeah, it's just yeah. frustrating when you have chronic things, trying to get the care that you need from people that are used to treating colds and the flu. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and I you know I I have so much respect for the doctors that that try that care that want to help you know so much respect I know I've got a I've got a doctor now a family practice doctor and she has a sign in her office that's like be the good right because she wants to be the best but unfortunately I think so many of them are just overworked and don't have enough staff and they just don't have time to care you know or pay attention yeah. And then, you know, kind of end of what I was saying, like I said, like it, 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 we, to get to where we got, like to learn what we have to, we have to really stop, like I said, A, B or C, like there's so many different variants to these solutions. And I think we're so close minded to what's going on. And that's why, like, like I said, even back to <clears throat> having people on to make them to others feel so alone, like they're, you're spreading information, like you're, you're talking about information about, you know, what it's like as a woman with chronic pain you might have just helped somebody who didn't even know they had chronic pain because their doctor just told them, you know, it's in your head or like, as you said earlier, or, you know, they have a little bit of kind of they're they're searching the web and the web is constantly telling them or, or someone giving them information that they, you know, they're putting them on the right track, but they keep getting, you know, taken off that path because they don't, they just get, keep getting misinformation. And then one person just yeah. says like, no, this is like, this is what my story, this is what I'm going through. This could be you. And and there is so much misinformation out there. There's so many things that, and there's so many different options. Some things help people that, that wouldn't help others. And, and like, you know, you look up how to help uh, mental health. You're going to see a thousand different supplements, a thousand different ways of dieting and exercising and all this. And you're just lost because you're like, well, I can't do all these things. So what do I do? And right. And again, even back to just the medical part, like there's so many different ways to fix. There's people that have all kinds. I mean, you know, even with going to with the drug part, we marijuana helps a lot of people with, with chronic pain and CBD oil. It, it helps people. So if it helps people, why are we writing it off? Yes. There are some people that smoke weed and they're lazy and they don't do anything, but there's a difference between what that person, that person's using it for medical use. And this person's using it just for, you know, cl- you know, to sleep or uh, to just be lazy, whatever, whatever it right. is. Like if you're not help, if you're not hurting other people or animals, like who gives a shit what they do? But let's just let's just solve issues. Let's let's, let's kind of get to the, the what the issue is and put everything on the table, not just the, the typical. You know, you call Apple and they say, "Well, did you um, did you uh, reset your phone yet?" Well, duh. Yes, I reset my phone. I've, that's the most basic thing you could have asked. Now, how do we get? To where, you know, because it, it seems like if you kind of know more than they do, they get kind of offended like, oh, so you know that so that I don't have to help you. You're Mr. Know-it-all. And it's like, no, I know some stuff and you know some stuff because you went to school for this. So let's put our information together and let's come up with a real schedule and a real plan of how to fix my problems instead of let's just, you know, take your temperature and let's just, you know, give it a week and see what happens. I, wa- I don't want to put a Band-Aid on it. I want to fix this. Um, yeah. So yeah. Well, in medicines that help the problem, not just patch over the symptoms. Sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because um, I want to get I want to get to the bottom of what the problem is and find out why I'm having these problems, and not just give me a prescription that's going to have other side effects and I have other problems left. You know. Yeah. And sometimes some of their solutions cause other problems. It may, exactly. it may enhance another issue that you kind of, you know, was either lingering or was never there. And, uh, and maybe it kind of suppressed your current problem, but caused something else. It's like, we have to figure out, you got to get to know someone and what their, what their body type is, what, what it is that affects them, what they're allergic to all these things. And then you come to a conclusion of, okay, I think we are, we can go on this path. And sometimes you're going to run into some walls, but that happens. But a lot of times you just get thrown around. It's like, well, okay, your back's bothering me. We'll send you to a chiropractor. We'll send you here. And, send, and like, no one really has any information. They just give you the most basic forms of solving the issue. And sometimes it's either worse for you or it just it's just deterring because you're like, why am I going to actually continue to try to fix this problem when you know the people that are supposedly went to school for this and know what they're doing, 
don't know how to solve my problem. So then you feel lost and you feel hopeless because you're like, well, life sucks because no one can help me. And this, this kind of adds to the loneliness because you're like, well, if people who went to school for this, the professionals out there, they don't know how to fix me. I damn sure don't. So I guess I'm just going to sit here and just, you know, wallow in my sorrows and just die. Well, exactly. Well, and the other problem too with that is that when you go to the doctor and they're like, no, you're fine. Then you go home and then everyone around you is like, oh, well, see, you're really fine. Yeah. And then that starts a whole other thing, you know, because, well, yeah. 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 And, and there's nothing worse than when someone says you're fine when you know you're not. It, it's, it's like, oh, you're fine. Like my grandma, like I tell her one of the things I've been struggling with a lot in the last couple of years is my brain fog. And so I've been taking matcha tea and different things to help kind of mitigate those issues. But I'm still not where I want to be. And, you know, my grandma and some people were like, no, you seem fine to us. It's like, well, that's fine to you. But I know me. I live with me. I've lived with me for 34 years. I know when I'm off and right. just to, please don't tell me just downplay what I'm going through. Cause I'm telling you. And then that's, that's, that's another thing that happens to a lot, especially younger kids, like downplaying their mental health, like downplaying what they're going through. And again, I know some people do things for attention. I get it. And it, it's gotta be very hard to be a parent. And it's damn sure hard to be a kid in today's society. But it's like oh my gosh. You, you have to find some middle ground because you cannot downplay someone's mental health because it could be the last time you'll see them when you do that shit. Because there's a, exactly. lot, of, there's a lot of us that are struggling and we're trying to find our identity. We're trying to find something to hold on to and something that makes us happy. And again, back to this chaotic world and all the things we see that are just being flashed on our screen, especially that with Instagram and, and TikTok, how everything is just instantaneous and you flip to the next thing, all these reels, boop, boop, oh, that's entertaining, that's cute, oh, look, that's terrible, oh, look, that's terrible, look, that's terrible, that's terrible. And you see 10 out of 15 things are terrible, you think everything is terrible. And you're just playing yeah. by the odds and the numbers of what's coming across your screen because the algorithm is pointing you in the direction of what they think you'll like. And you, as of right now, you saw 10 out of 15 things were bad. So they're saying, you must like negative things. Here's another 30 out of 40. And then here's another 20 out of 21. And all of a sudden you're just, you're engulfed in this shit world of sadness and anger. And, and, and then you become sad and angry and you feel hopeless. And then you go to tell your parents, I'm sad and hopeless and I'm, I'm depressed. And it's like, oh, you're okay. It's like. I am not okay. Like inside my head, inside my body, I'm on fire. Like maybe not like in inflammation as far as like the skin. I'm just talking about my brain and everything. Like right now, everything just seems like death. And it, it, you gotta, like I said, that's why I'm so, I'm so passionate about it because people don't talk about it this way. They talk about it this surface little pansy way that it's like, it doesn't get to anybody. No one hears this shit. They hear, oh yeah, I'm sad. Oh, so you must have you must have depression. It's like no shit, you know. Like, of course I have depression because I'm sad. But a lot of people are just sad because their prom date canceled on them or whatever. But real depression can be a, a, a huge downfall for the rest of your life. Stress can kill you. Like these are things that you hear, right? But they're real. <laughs> exactly. Well, and you know there was there was a child a few years ago that um, that we knew that was like oh, I. I feel like I'm going to kill myself. I need to be in, inpatient. I need to go inpatient. And people were like, well, I think they're just taking it. And I was like, but if, even if they're trying to get attention in that way, that tells you that they're having those thoughts. Like you, they need to go. Yeah. Whether other people think that that's a valid or not, if you're getting to the point where you're begging for that, you need to listen to people and say, okay, we're going to get you the help that you're asking for and not just blow them off and be like, nah, you'll be fine later. You know? Yeah. And and if they're asking because, to be if they're asking to be put in a hospital, it's probably meaning they really want to go because I don't know many people that are like, Oh, I can't wait to go to the hospital. Especially where you exactly. may be in a straight jacket or, you know, forced medication or whatever. No one wants to go through that. They don't want to go right. through a place where you people as soon as you come out, everyone's like, Oh, you're crazy. Because you went to the crazy house. It's like no one wants to deal with this. But if I'm asking to go to what they perceive to be the crazy house, it probably means I have some real issues and I need to go. Exactly. Exactly. And it just, I don't know. It just, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. If people, if people are asking for help or they're, they're talking about, or they made plans, you know, good night. If they've got a plan, you have to listen. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, listening is very key. And, 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 you know, 
but it, when you watch just something like like Fox and CNN, these you know big conglomerate companies, they will have the opposite perspective on, and it's almost like they they make it look like yay, like see we're open minded and we we have that person on, but really it's just having that person on not listening to them and then bombarding them with six other people to just go, yeah, this is our views. This is our channel. And yeah, you're on here, but we're, we didn't listen to anything you said. We're not really coming to any kind of understanding. There is no, you know, g- you know, degree, agree to disagree. There's just my opinion and there's, yeah, your little opinion. And it's just, there's no one listening to each other. There's no one trying to integrate and, 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 and learn about other cultures and learn about each other. It's just forced. And it's and we we take out all that we want to delete all the bad, right? Because like I watched the movie that just came out on Netflix, but it was out in the movie. They're called The Woman King, that everybody was like praising because it's this movie about all these black women who fought off this other tribe who was trying to kill them. But what they took out of it is that these women also were a part of the slave trade and they enslaved people. They took it out and made it a more positive message. And it's like, what are we doing here? Like, it, like these people weren't good people. But we made it good because we don't want to say it was bad because it's, it's a movie about black people. And I get it. But, like, there's plenty of great black role models. There's plenty of great black artistry that you can show without lying. And it's like we're for, and we're just taking out. Like, they had a movie about the Tuskegee Airmen. And they just took out the whole, like, what they did to these pilots. And they, and they made them talk jive and all these. It's like we are just trying to delete history. We're trying to delete everything. And we want to just in, live in this weird, peaceful world. But then the media wants to show us that everything is bad. So like, wh- where do we go? We can't live in both. And we, we just, yeah. and we can't, we can't delete history. We just can't, we have to learn. We have to realize that we've evolved and we are not those same people from many years ago. But every time we say America is this great place and all that, it's like, in compared to some, sure. But like we have, way too many homeless people we have way too many people dying on drugs we have way too many people that can't work and won't be allowed to work because of certain reasons we have so much we have children disappearing by the millions every year you know sexual assault and all these things just continue to happen but we can't just say we're just so much more so much better than everyone else just because of certain things because we have food and you know, there's some freedoms, you know, I mean, we're going to go on a tangent on 30 different subjects here, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. It's, it's, it, I don't know. It, it, we, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And that's why you kind of have to really like, you have to pick a couple things to fight for. And you just, you have to kind of turn yourself off to other things because you're eventually going to be in 30 different wars and you can't really put a hundred percent into all 30. You, you, you can, exactly. So you're kind of you're kind of breaking down yourself, and that's kind of how you segregate a community, like the disability community. If you break them down into deaf, blind, paraplegic, dwarfism, chronic pain, you break them down into thirty different communities. Then it's easy to break them down. And it's easy to just fight them, and it's easy to just kind of pretend to care and, and a lot of things. So you have to really care about, like for you, it's chronic pain and 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 you know, maybe disability rights and things and, and helping older women and all these things. Those are the issues you want to, you care about those other things and you have enough intelligence to talk about those other things, but you can't be as passionate about it because your passion is already kind of put in certain canisters and you can't kind of really, you can't pass any more around. You don't have anything left. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And so, right. And just like the, there's political things and there's all these different things, right. That we have, we have a lot of passion about, but yeah, you can't be on fire about 10 things at the same time or you'll explode. Sure. And you, yeah. you know, so we, we, we each do our own part though, you know, like you're doing your thing and I'm doing my thing and we're all, everybody's helping somebody. Right. Or right. We, and then yeah. as long as everyone's helping somebody, the whole world is a better place. Yeah. Or you can build this like super team. Like for me, like I constantly have people on who do know these things and do live these lives and can talk to it. And I can throw in my little pieces and parts to it. But that's not like I'm not super passionate about people dealing with addiction issues because I've never done drugs in my life. I mean, I care about it. I genuinely want it to stop. I want we I want more information. I want people to try to help anybody who's dealing with any kind of struggle. But it's not my life. It's not my passion. So I'll have people on who have dealt with alcohol issues, dealt with drug issues, sex addiction, whatever. 
and they will tell you what it's like and they will show you how passionate they are. And that's good enough for me. So we can do our part by having other people on or, you know, putting out the information for others, but we, we can't just go full tilt and just go, yes, I'm all on. Like, you're right. I got you. You can support these people and say, look, I will promote you or I will show up to some rally for you or whatever, but I can't just, I can't just all of a sudden just change my whole movement for three other movements. Cause it's, it's hard. You can't, you can't do it. Yeah. No, you can't. <clears throat> um, so in a more positive way, so what made you kind of want to do something for women 50 and above? Well, because, and this kind of goes along with what we're talking about. So we, oh, sorry. Um, my phone just made a little singing song sound. Um, so to be, to be the, the person who is the face of chronically ill moms, right? Mm -hmm. The way that I was introducing myself was, Hey, I'm Jen and I've got multiple chronic, seven kids and multiple chronic illnesses. Right. Um, originally my podcast was called the sick mom's guide, but it makes me the sick mom. And so for eight years, that was like my identity. And after a little, after that long, I just had to take a break and say, okay, you know what? I want to help my sick moms, right? The group is still there. I've got one of them kind of leading it, but I had to move into a place that was a little bit more positive because I just couldn't carry that identity with me. And now I can say, okay, I'm fabulous over 50. We're working on being fabulous, right? Instead of I'm sick. And so I still have the same chronic illnesses. It hasn't changed. But what I've learned is, for me, if I stop focusing on my symptoms and all that, then I legitimately feel better I don't, because I'm not thinking about it all the time, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, but when I wake up and I'm like, oh, I've got this and I've got that and I've got, you know, probably like you, right? Like you wake up and think about the things that you can't do with low vision. Then after a while, that gets really depressing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you wake up and you're like, okay, I'm going to wake up and think about how I'm going to be a badass today. Well, that's way more positive, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of, that's why I decided to make the change. And it has been mentally very good for me. <laughs> Um, because I, like I said, I still, I love my mom and I have a passion for them, but I can't be that person right now. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to focus on something where I'm saying positive words, um, instead of consistently talking about that. And it's, it's just been about a month and I think it's made a big mental, it's, it's put, put me forward a lot mentally in a better spot. So that's good. That's always good. Yeah. No, yeah. Plus, you know, I was at a podcasting convention and I realized there isn't anything for older women and we need that because they're, they're, it's a small demo a demographic of women who podcast that are over 50, but I think they needed something special. Yeah. So. And it, it's, you know, when you look at what goes on in entertainment and everything, it's rare you see anything empowering for older people in general, um, but especially women. Because it's like almost like the sex appeal and everything is gone and, and you know, you're just old and washed up and it's like, it's not right, exactly. the case. And we're like but, worthless. Yeah, you're worthless. You know? and, yeah. and that's what I want to stop, right, is just to stop that and say no. Just because we're older does not mean we're worthless. We have got a lot to contribute and this is how we're going to do it. So. Yeah, no, for sure. You, you have to. Like I said, I, I, my, my grandma is 90 and she's as healthy as many peop most people I know. And she walks a mile a day and, and she snow blows her own driveway and she does all these great things and she's 90 and I don't know many people doing it in their 40s and 50s. So it's like empowering anyone, especially, you know, because you ask many people, what is, what is, what's so great about getting old? Not many people are going to tell you much. It's like, well, you get old, your body dissolves and everything gets worse and this and then you just hear people complaining, but there are people out there that are older I mean, you look at like Betty White, for instance. I know she's a celebrity, but she 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 was almost she was like a week away from being a hundred. She didn't die. Right. She just died of natural causes. But she she right. had work the next week. She was going to do be in a show. She was going to do some things, and exactly. she just, her body just said, "Nah, we're done." And she she died pretty peacefully. And but she kept going. She just kept working and kept working and just did her thing and. 
just kept being herself. And it was like, oh, okay. Like, if you would have asked me who would have died, her or Ozzy Osbourne first, I would have told you Ozzy Osbourne for the last 30 years. But right? he's still oh alive God. and doing drugs. Yeah. And she is dead and because of natural causes. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. you know, but anyway, like she... She, she she was a very powerful woman who just lived a great life and and you know she showed you that being ninety nine and 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 under was was okay. Um, and again, I know exactly. she's, she's maybe an anomaly. She's one of the few people that really showed it, but she didn't seem to really waver on her being older. Like matter, she didn't care. She didn't care what people thought. Exactly, from. exactly. And I think you know you got to get to that space where you do where you get to that point. And that's what I would like to help people do, you know, is say, it's okay. It's okay to be yourself. You know, you don't have to Botox and do all that stuff. Just be you and it's going to be all right. But I actually have got to um, go. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Um, I'm, I'm, I hope we can keep in touch because you seem like an awesome person. Oh, I would love to keep in touch. I think, and yeah, and I would like to interview you too at some point. Oh, absolutely. I think. Our conversation could just honestly go on for hours. Absolutely, yeah. Anything if you I need, I didn't have another interview. I would never go. No, but, I, um, I appreciate it. anything you need. I, I absolutely. I was going to suggest that, not to throw my force myself on your show, but I absolutely would uh, come on your show. Um, you obviously have my number, so we can keep in touch. But before you go, do you have anything to promote? Because I don't want to forget that. Um, do you have a book or a website or anything? Your podcast? Yeah, you know what? Je- um, I would love if people would visit Jen at JenHardy.net if you are over 50 or know someone who is over 50 because I've got some things that I'm about to start offering that I know that they're really going to help women that are in that age gra- group. And so, yeah, that would be fantastic. And you're, you want to any, tell anybody your podcast names? Um, yeah, Fabulous Over 50 for Women Over 50 and Medical Gaslighting. Um, to give patients a voice. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And like I said, we'll, we'll talk soon. Um, you have Absolutely. A, you have a friend. Now. Yeah, so we will anything? definitely you talk need someone to talk to when you're going through your shit. Just please reach out. And you know what? Same, same here because uh, I've been there. So yeah, I'm here. All right, you're amazing. Thank you so much for letting me join you today. This has been great. Thank you for allowing me to ramble with you. <laughs> so yeah. But you're amazing All right. yourself. And we'll thank talk. you. Enjoy your interview. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Again, I apologize for rambling. I think I rambled too much that episode. Maybe I'm just insecure. Well, no, I know I'm insecure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, before I finish up here, wrap up, will you have anything to say? Well, he's just in a ball sleep and he's out. I don't even like, he jumped up on the couch as soon as I called her and was like, oh, podcast time that means nap time uh, i guess my voice is soothing you'll have to tell me out there is my voice relaxing some i actually have heard that before but i guess it's really relaxing for him because he sleeps a lot when i'm on the phone and when i uh when i'm on the pod when i'm doing the podcast so yeah uh, anyway uh glad to meet another friend um she is a person i can tell i'll talk to a lot because we were talking a lot before the show and i just had to just say can we just do the podcast so that way we can just get it over with and then we can go on from there. Um, but yeah, keep trying to make friends, guys. I'm going through my shit and going up and down with my mental health. Um, hopefully by the time you hear this, I will be doing better. Um, it, it just comes and goes, these ebbs and flows in my depression. But I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm kicking, I'm fighting. I have no plans on going anywhere. So thank you for being on this journey with me. And um, please out there, if you can, like I said, take a few minutes out of your day just to do something nice for somebody or for yourself. Um, check on somebody, man, check on somebody you care about. It's really, really appreciated when you do things like that because man, um, it's always nice. It's nice. Jesus, am I Australia? Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's, it's always nice to know someone is thinking of you, especially when you're thinking that no one cares about you. I just kind of had an episode myself where I just was like, fuck people, even people I love, because, you know, I turned my phone off, just put it on do not disturb. And I was like, I don't care. No one's going to reach out to me. And of course I was right. They didn't, but it didn't mean they didn't care. So, um, but yeah, thank you for being with me. I know I'm a little weird and sometimes I ramble and I mix words and things. Cause it's just like my mind is just all, it's going crazy, but I'm here. I'm trying to become a better person. Hopefully you are as well. And let's, uh, 
you're here for tomorrow. Hopefully we're here to, we're going to make it and we'll do some good tomorrow. All right. Thanks guys. See y'all later. Thank you.